Good morning, everyone. This is Dale Danker, president of TW Local 514 here in the great state of Oklahoma. Um, it's been a week or so since I've posted a video, I'm getting a lot of questions and concerns about lots of topics, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, uh, contractual issues, early out, voluntary uh, leaves, um, how the implementation of the contract is going. So I want to cover a few of those. Uh, first thing I would like to uh, discuss, I'm going to be looking down at my notes here. Um, also want to say if you will subscribe to this YouTube channel, it will help me get over a thousand and it will help um, have more options to to be able to have live interactive um, videos with with the members so please subscribe um i keep i keep it public so we can try to get it over a thousand so you can have your friends subscribe they might not want to hear what i have to say about things but there's a reason to keep it public so and if we keep it public and, and, the, and the company gets to listen to it 20 or 30 minutes after we post it so that's always an, an interesting thought that i keep in the back of my head that uh, they get to share right along with us um, positive COVID-19 test here in Tulsa, um, reported 514 members in Dallas. I have no known positives from our MCTs, uh, that are local 514 members. So that is good. They are, they, they work in a confined area as well. And I know that Jason Best has, um, shared with me steps that they're taking to make sure that they have enough manpower there to um, provide the services that the maintenance control technicians do. Um, he tries to keep me posted up where they're at. So I've got no known reports of, of that group of MCTs having any positives. But here at the base, we have um, had two knowns in um, facilities. It was learned and determined that it was in the environmental area of facilities on the north end of the base. Um, We've had uh, one known in the avionics in the CAM building. We've had one known supervisor uh, in Hangar 1. Um, I'm told Doc A and B don't have an official confirmation of that. Um, I learned that we had one nurse over in the medical department that had uh, a positive. Um, and... Um, Two in the engine shop, and um, unfortunately and tragically, we um, one of those positive cases resulted in the um, Steve Williams losing his battle with this virus, resulted in his death, and I would like to observe a few moments of silence out of respect for the loss of Steve and his family. I know that um, there's been a lot of concerns, a lot of questions about local 501 and 591 in New York. Um, people here wanting to be sent home. One guy calls me and tells me that um, he's going to sue me because I'm not doing enough to protect them. I'm not. He's going to sue me because I can't get it where everybody in Tulsa can go home with pay, like 591 and 501. Um, a quick, quick concern, or let me address that briefly. Um, the COVID-19 pandemic in New York is something out of a horror movie the 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 amount of losses that they're having there um so the flight schedule went down drastically in in the three stations there in the new york area and the requirement for the amount of manpower that was needed to handle those flights was greatly reduced and so the decision was made by the company to have those people work one day a week but of course get paid full paycheck when the flights come back up when the COVID-19 starts 
loosening its grip on the New York. Polly Reeves, I'll call you right back, buddy. Um, then, then those folks hopefully can come back to work healthy and be able to work those flights. Um, so here in Tulsa, I just keep reminding everybody, everyone to work as safe as you can, get in, get your job assignment, um, help protect each other. We're out of mask. I'm told today over the phone, um, with the company. Um, so if you are in an area and you're working in close proximity with other folks and you don't feel safe, I would just simply ask that you have that conversation with your crew chief and, um, see what they can work out, um, address it with your local management team. Um, it's everybody's desire to, to stay safe. So have those conversations with your local team and see what they can do to try to get it where everyone can accomplish their tasks and do it in a safe manner. Um, the problem of masks, I had my daughter get out some uh, fabric and she they made masks for our family. Um, and I know that you gotta kinda be, um, uh, you kinda gotta use your brain a little bit to come up with uh, what can be the elastic to make your mask out of. It seems like everybody's out of everything. So last I seen a video, they were taking ace wrap bandages and cutting them up into small strips and making the elastic. So um, you can buy a bandana and I made another one. Took some of my girls, uh, like the rubber bands that they use in their hair and uh, I was able to make one at first and then just wrap the bandana through, put it around my ears. So please don't rely on the company to protect you, protect yourself. Um, if you're working around, around folks and people are coughing, at least if you have even a cloth mask on, um, they are saying that would protect you from breathing in the droplets of their cough. So, um, I'm sure that, uh, you've seen the CDC guidelines and the company says that they're just that their guidelines to try to follow. It's not a forced requirement. So six foot rule. Um, if your crew chief gives you a job assignment where that's going to be difficult, try to have a conversation with them that you can, um, get your work done in a timely manner and still protect yourself. Uh, early out lump sum. Um, we have, uh, little bit of information that come through yesterday from the international that the um, if you're choosing the early out lump sum payment um, your vacation and sick time payout will be paid to you when you are um, separating from the company uh, Memorial Day working with the company to um, they're going to put a letter out about Memorial Day, and it's going to talk about um, the differences between the old contract and what we do now. So Memorial Day. Of course, the old contract, we didn't get Memorial Day, but how you handle the holidays is different. So the base used to say everyone's off, and there was a volunteer list to sign up. It's opposite of that now. Now, if you're scheduled to work, there will be a sheet that comes out that says you want to take that day off. You're requesting to take that day off. You are also going to have to make a determination if you want to be paid holiday pay or if you want to have that time comped. So if you're going to work, you're going to come into work. If you're an eight hour guy, you're going to get holiday pay and eight hours at time and a half. If you're on a 10 hour shift, you'll get holiday pay and 10 hours at time and a half. If you are working and you're gonna get eight hours holiday pay and you're eight hours at time and a half, this over here, holiday pay, 
You will make a determination if you want the eight hours holiday pay or if you want a day put into a comp bank to be used at a later date. If you are not scheduled to work, what does that mean? So Memorial Day comes around and you're going to observe Memorial Day. So you have to ask yourself, do I want paid eight hours at straight time or do I want a day put in my comp bank? So there's going to be a letter that comes out from the company that gets into the explanation of Memorial Day. Um, I did learn that the maintenance training specialist, uh, there was an amendment to Appendix B of the maintenance and related bylaws of the association and the contractual issues um, with the MTS. It was their it was their contract book and they will handle contractual issues um, for the maintenance training specialist. That's our old tech crew chief trainers. They've got until 30 days after date of ratification to say if they're going to stay in the MTS book, become maintenance training specialist from tech crew chief trainer to MTS, or they can opt out and go back to their basic classification. Um, disciplinary action, you know, uh, time and attendance, those things will be handled by local 514. Their dues will continue. They'll still be TWU members. Their dues will come to 514. Um, it's just that that contract book uh, historically was an IEM contract book, and they will handle the contractual issues that go along with that. Okay. We are starting to receive our new rates in our paychecks. I just simply ask everyone to go do your math. Look at your paycheck, do your math. If you have an issue with your paycheck, see your immediate supervisor or contact a shop steward. If you think there's, it's incorrect, we will, we will get into that for you. Um, May 22nd is still the date that I am told that you will receive your $6,000 signing bonus as a special, special check, obviously deposited into your bank account. And if you are owed by the new chart, a week of vacation that you would have been able to pick had we got the contract done last year, it's not only just the guys that are at the top of the accrual rate, down through the vacation selection, there will be other steps where people would have gone to another week's vacation had this been accomplished last year. Um, they will get a week's vacation pay at their rate. And I am told by American Airlines that those two payouts will be included on the same check. Now, the last thing I want to discuss is We've got a new contract, now what? So we have the implementation letter that um, I've had Al Ball post. But what's not, um, there's a lot of changes, and, and one of the first things that, that has to happen is we have a bid that's coming up, a shift bid. So three times a year, January, May, and September, you will have a bid. And depending on your bid area, within your bid area, you may have one location or you may have more than one location. You may have multiple locations as options to bid to. Those have to be established. Once those are established, then, then within that bid area, your overtime list will be established and it will be low hours up. So the, the, the main problem is we've had two meetings with the company and it is troubling that four and a half years of negotiating a contract, the first thing that we're going to sit down and talk about is how we bid. And the paragraph says that the crew chief shall bid first, followed by the crew. So that doesn't mean it's fifth grade dodgeball to where we have all the crew chiefs on one side of the room and 
say for instance in Tulsa hangar one, two, and three, you have 1137-ish employees in one group. And say on day shift, you may have 30 crew chiefs with five, eight, Saturday, Sunday off. And the 30 crew chiefs select what they want by their seniority. And there you have this pool of 30 crew chiefs. And if each one of them gets 16, you have 480 um, guys on a crew standing there and they, they come to work and the crew chiefs go with the supervisors and they go in a room and they play NFL draft day. I want this guy. I want that guy. I don't want those guys. Um, I don't think that's how the contract was um, written. I don't think the notes of the negotiations reflect that that's how it was written, but that seems to be the conversations that we're having. Now, um, they've been somewhat productive, but I am um, disappointed. Uh, I have another meeting scheduled um, Monday with the company. Um, we'll see how it goes. To me, um, if you have a crew, a crew chief, that crew chief ought to have a crew. The crew chief ratio says it shall be at the base between 14 and 16. Um, I don't think it says that everybody bid your shift and days off. Oh, we have 30 crew chiefs and every day we want 480 people to show up because the crew roster has at the top of it, 30 crew chiefs and 480 guys. And every day we show up, we try to spread out six feet apart. And every day for that four months, 30 crew chiefs and 480 guys go, okay, I, I got this work. I want to I wanna give it to one of these 480 guys. Uh, I, I don't think the bid selection process says that 30 crew chiefs show up, 480 guys show up, and somebody determines which crew chief you're going to work under for that bid for that four months. The, the company may think that it says that, and, and if it does, I, I am um, I'm hopeful that our international reps will soon um, take up that challenge and, and get that lined out. I believe, I believe that you should show up to work, know who your crew chief is, go to that crew chief, get your job assignment. If the contract does state this, because we had this discussion at the table in negotiations, what they would say, what if a guy is on a crew, crew chief's got a crew, and we have some trouble with another airplane that we need more manpower? Could a guy, could the company come to the crew chief, crew chiefs, and say, does anybody, is anybody in good shape that you could afford to let two people go down here and help this other crew chief? At the table, the union was in agreement that that would be a job assignment and that we wouldn't have a problem saying, hey, on this day, I need you two to go work with this other crew to accomplish. Now, how does that affect the crew chief ratio? Well, I believe that the crew chief that moved the two guys, I believe that crew chief was assigning those two guys to go work down there and it still falls within the crew chief ratio. So everything else in the contract that's not implemented outside your pay, um, you know, your 401k, that's, that's going to start in uh, May, they've said they're going to dump it in once a month. Um, but a lot of the work rule changes, every, every, everything, in my opinion, is in jeopardy until we get bid area and bid locations lined out to where a crew chief bids, not before the first of the month, and the crew can see where the crew chiefs are at, what days and shift they're on, and they can choose to turn in their bid sheets after the crew chief's bid. And then a determination can be made whether they got that selection or they got their third, their fourth, or their fifth selection. And then you'll come into work. Some That'll be posted. The book says it'll be posted. And on the 15th, you'll start your new date unless it's agreed to be moved mutually between the company and the union. This time, I'm trying to work with the company this is a large base. There's a lot of moving pieces, and I'm trying to work with them to get it right the first time. If we can agree upon what the language of the contract says where a crew chief bids first and a crew bids after that, if we can agree upon that, then I, I'm in agreement to move it to June 6, which was asked by me of Eric Oland, because I want it to be correct. Um, if, if we're going to be in disagreement on 
how to how to interpret the contract when it's to me it's pretty easy to read paragraph 94 in the MR book I mean page 94 paragraph E um, but there's a lot of confusion and it just seems like there shouldn't be a lot of confusion so this uh, video is running on for 20 minutes I'm gonna say thank you for listening and and shut it down and and uh, post more updates when we have more information to give out. Thank you guys and gals and have a nice day.